A very warm welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mahavani. I hope you all are doing good. Today we are going to talk about growing shadow of China in Indo-Pacific region. Now the reason why I have decided to speak on this particular topic is because this I believe is a is a topic uh, on which uh, you may find a direct question in your mains examination. So uh, there are high chances uh, that uh, you may find a question on this particular topic. And uh, the other thing is that in today's discussion, you may also find bits and pieces that will help you with your upcoming prelims as well. With this, dear friends, if you want to download the PDF of uh, today's discussion, check out my Facebook page or Twitter handle. I have a good news for you. And the good news is that up to 50% off is available on our pen drive and tablet courses. This is going to last till 18th of April. So make the most out of this up to 50% off. And if you have any question or queries, feel free to give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen, or you can also use the chat support that is available on our portal. Now, we got a big news last week. And the big news is that this aircraft carrier called Carl Vincent, it made a port call at Da Nang. Da Nang is a port of Vietnam. This is here where you can see on your screen. And it made a port call here, aircraft carrier. And this is a big news, first of all, because if you go back in the history of Vietnam and USA, then I'm sure you are aware about this thing. They had a very big war between them, a very bloody war between them. And uh, USA lost uh, many of its brave soldiers. And it was a very painful war for USA. Things are alright between Vietnam and USA now, but the thing is, last time when we saw USA's military personnel here in the soil of Vietnam was back in 1975. And here we are in 2018 and we are seeing this situation that uh, an aircraft carrier is basically parking itself here in Da Nang. And Da Nang is sharing its border with South China Sea. Now, South China Sea, I believe that you would be aware about this thing, is a problematic area because of this expansionist theory of China. And this is the main topic that we are discussing today. But uh, we are going to strategically analyze this particular topic because uh, this expansionist theory of China can have a very negative impact on Indo-Pacific region. It can uh, basically hamper international trade and international order as well. And as far as uh, world powers are concerned, let's take example of USA. Now, even today, right, even today, USA is not having any sort of proper dedicated strategy for South China Sea. When Barack Obama was in White House, during that point of time, China started its expansionist theory or it started creating this artificial islands. And so far, China has created the seven artificial islands in South China Sea. China is claiming that this nine dashed line belongs to China. Uh, it is uh, providing this reference of a historical book saying that uh, this portion has always belonged to China, but uh, this claim is rejected by other countries. In fact, uh, Philippines took China to international court as well. Uh, the order was in favor of Philipp uh, Philippines and against China, but then as well, China did not pay any heed to this international court's verdict or judgment. There are other countries as well. You have Vietnam that is also staking its claim in this islands of uh, South China Sea. But China at present is a very strong country and China has basically taken over this whole South China Sea region. So we don't have any strategy from USA. We have uh, Donald Trump at present in White House. But then as well, you can say that you might have heard about South China Sea many a times in his speech. But as far as policy is concerned, this particular area is not under his radar. So this is a very sad scenario of the world. A superpower for a very long period of time has been incapable of controlling this expansionist theory of China. Now the thing is, this developments, this artificial island creation of China in the South China Sea can have far-reaching strategic implication for Indo-Pacific region and for international maritime order as well. And the most important point in today's discussion is this thing, that Indo-Pacific is interconnected thing. Earlier on, we used to read and hear this uh, terminology called Asia-Pacific. But uh, since we had this Quad meeting right after that, and because this China's expansionism that is going on in different parts of the world, 
uh, Indo-Pacific is becoming more and more important. And let me zoom it up for you and show you Indo-Pacific. Now, the thing is, Indo-Pacific is just like a cobweb. It's just like a cobweb. You know, when you touch one string of cobweb, the whole cobweb will come into a dance form in the same way. Or it will start moving, isn't it? It will have a ripple effect if you touch just one string of a cobweb. And here you can see this is South China Sea here. And here is your Indian Ocean and here is your Pacific Ocean. And a link that is connecting this Pacific Ocean with Indian Ocean is this South China Sea. Very important location. Now imagine that if your ship, say for example, is leaving Chennai, then entering into this Strait of Malacca, if you want to send something, or if you want to buy something or if you want to sell something to Japan, then from Chennai you have to take this route. This is the best route that you have. From Strait of Malacca, you enter into South China Sea. And from here you can reach Japan and other way around as well. But if imagine if you are not allowed uh, to pass from here that freely or if you see Chinese interference, then just imagine how much trouble it can create for international trade. What about China uh, keeps on... Um, uh, you can say intercepting different uh, merchant ships uh, in the name of uh, checking it and uh, then it can delay things for a very long period of time and in this way it can create fresh troubles for for this international trade apart from that uh, it can basically you can say this cut off this whole link uh, between this japan and other countries and india and africa and other west asian countries now the thing is uh, if you go back in the past, uh, like five, ten years ago, maybe 10, 10, 15 years ago, that it was said by this uh, different defense analysts and strategic analysts, uh, they used to say this thing that if, if China will take over the South China Sea, then there are high chances that uh, the next step of China will be to take over this Indian Ocean as well as Pacific Ocean. That's exactly what is happening at present. China is expanding its uh, colonization in Indian Ocean as well as it is trying to basically uh, spread its wing in, in, in this uh, Western Pacific Ocean as well. And recently China declared this uh, Polar Sil Silk Road as well. And you can see here uh, from Shanghai, it will if you go northwards, then you reach here in Arctic Ocean. And from here, it is basically trying to connect with this Scandinavian countries and then later on with this European countries of uh, Britain, France and other countries. So this is how China is basically building different ports in different parts of the world and most of uh, the ports that are created by China are dual purpose port. One more thing that is bit not directly related with this topic but indirectly you can imagine this will this will help you in understanding this gravity of the events that we are discussing. See China at present, China has leased uh, fertile land from all these different countries because of uh, from its this one boy, one belt, one OBOR, one belt, one road policy of China. You know, this roadways connecting all these Central Asian countries. So what China is doing is because China is aware about this thing that in future it is going to face a bit of or the world is going to face this water crisis. So from right now, China has started basically leasing this uh, fertile land of all these countries and it is uh, using all the chemicals and basically it is sucking away everything that it can as far as food and other items are concerned so it is preserving its water for future and it is sucking away all these natural resources from this country so this is a thing that china has started doing it and in future we will be talking about this thing when we will see some negative impact of this expansionism or colonization of China. The other thing is, uh, as far as this South China Sea is concerned, it is using this magical island building machine. That's what China calls it. Uh, they are basically called super dredger and they what, how they work is uh, they will blow water at the bottom of this ocean or sea and then you will have this disturbance, all the mud will come up. The water will become a bit muddy and then it will suck away all this muddy water and it will separate this water and mud and then you have this pure mud and then it will throw away this mud or it, it will pump this mud uh, to a desired location. And this thing goes on and on for a, a long period of time. And 
in a very short while you will find you will find this patches of land over your a small artificial island this is a machine this is called super dredger and china is using it quite heavily 24 by 7 of course you can imagine this damage this machine can do to biodiversity apart from that it is also doing uh, or it is also creating this heavy damage uh, as far as this strategic concerns or strategic uh, things are concerned it has created as per this asia maritime transparency initiative so far china has created 290000 square meters of this artificial islands now as far as usa is concerned it is of course it's not having any sort of proper dedicated strategy for south china sea apart from that it is distracted as well now you have this uh, freedom of navigation usa's freedom of navigation operations and what it does or basically it is a customary international law and as per this fon or us fonops if a ship say for example if a ship is carrying flag of india a sovereign country of course and then other countries cannot intercept or cannot interfere or cannot stop that particular ship as far as it's not breaching any international law but there are high chances that uh, here we will find and we have seen this thing as well many times in china in this south china sea that if a particular ship is passing nearby the south china sea then china will uh, basically intercept this uh, ship and it will also you know issue this warnings that if you don't step out from this region then we may take military actions and things like that and this sort of things are not helping at all to this uh, regional allies of usa that are nearby this uh, south china sea and uh, this particular law as well is not deterring china from doing all this sort of things that it is doing in south china sea now the thing is uh, this move of china of creating artificial island is a very dangerous move because artificial islands right they can work as permanent aircraft carriers and the way china is militarizing this uh, islands this artificial islands uh, it is basically giving this this upper hand to china as far as this military is concerned because once you develop your uh, develop your this artificial islands as as a military base and once you land your once you make it a sort of permanent aircraft carrier what you are doing is basically you are taking this indian ocean as well as western pacific ocean within your range and that's what has happened that china uh, under this china's uh, uh, warrior planes right this uh, using this artificial islands as as uh, aircraft permanent aircraft carriers now china can reach indian ocean as well as western pacific ocean with its fighter planes and this is one of the reason why japan has again uh, started uh, increasing its military outlays india as well has uh, revived its uh, stalled naval modernization program now if you see this portion here indian ocean region particularly you might have heard about this uh, string of pearls as well the string of pearl route and here you can also notice this thing that oil shipping lanes are passing from this indian ocean it is a very busy ocean as far as trade and other things are concerned and you can see this big oily region is passing all its ship or oil is been floating from this portion here entering into uh, this strait of malaga then entering into south china sea and uh, we have also seen this thing that china has built its first overseas military base in this country called djibouti now if you observe djibouti here and it's a strategic location you have this red sea here mediterranean sea is here so all the things uh, that are coming from europe via mediterranean sea via suez canal it will enter red sea then here you have this bab al mandeb over this portion here you have this bab al, -Bab -Al mandeb uh, that is been uh, looked by or it is a point uh, that can be easily controlled if you if you have a sort of uh, military base in Djibouti. Djibouti is located at a very strategic place here, and from Bab al Mandeb you can you can enter this Arabian Sea. So if you have a military base, then you can also control this trade and other things. Uh, God forbid, if we have a big war in future, then China will have an upper hand because it is placing all its uh, you can say dual this all this military base and other ports like Gwadar port, 
right it is a dual purpose port china is parking its uh, or docking its merchant navy as well as uh, nuclear powered navy ships here in guadar same thing applies to this uh, this quite uh, quite pew of uh, myanmar now this place here of myanmar this quite pew is very beautiful it is very serene um, it can be used for uh, recre recreational activities and uh, what china is doing is because uh, this particular place has this uh, naturally it has this deep water so you can build a very good port here and again china is building a dual purpose port here it has got this humban tota of sri lanka for 99 years uh, as a lease it has got 70 percent stake in this myanmar's deep water port and maldives as well recently we saw this political crisis that were going on over here and it's quite surprising that china was uh, was working as or china was playing a role of mediator between this opposition and uh, government of maldives so these things are very threatening it is a big problem for india because india is a country that is having a strategic upper hand in this indian ocean region and uh, the way china is building different things over here you can see there are many different ports built by china in in asean countries as well now this rapidly changing maritime dynamics in indo-pacific region not only inject strategic uncertainty but also raise geopolitical risks now the only thing that we can do or the only option that we have in our hand is that we have to work together recently we talked about this quad right it was in news this quad was in news and you have this four countries you have australia australia is a country that is sharing its border with indian ocean as well as pacific ocean of course india you know the location japan pacific ocean usa pacific ocean but again usa is a country that is that japan and usa both they have invested heavily in india they have invested heavily in asean countries they have invested heavily in african countries as well so they have this strategic interest in different parts of the world particularly this indo-pacific region and the sad thing is that uh, so far quad has not taken off uh, quad is not a new thing it was back in somewhere 2007 when this idea of quad was was talked about for the first time but then it was thrown under the carpet now it is back again because uh, now this bigger countries this australia india japan usa and other countries they have realized this thing that alone they cannot stop china and so far no one has stopped china in this expansionist uh, behavior of china and uh, they have also talked about this quad plus two quad plus two will have france and britain as well now the reason why we'll have france and britain is because as you can see here britain is having a small island here in indian ocean this makes britain as a stakeholder of indian ocean or indo-pacific region and apart from that uh, i'm sure you are aware about this thing as well when french president emmanuel macron was here in india at that point of time we talked about this indo-pacific region indian ocean region and the only reason is that as you can see france the mainland is in europe but it is having the small territories in different parts of the world it has uh, its territories in pacific ocean as well as you can see reunion island and other islands in indian ocean as well so we can add these two countries as well now remember these two countries are permanent member of united nations security council so we will have a bit of bit more stronger group quad plus two will become a bit more stronger uh, recently we have also india and france we have agreed that we will uh, we will allow reciprocal access to each other's navy to use naval facility and other facilities of each other's country and uh, it is something similar to this limao limao is uh, us india logistic exchange logistics exchange memorandum of agreement remember this thing may uh, they can they can ask you or there can be a question on this limao mcq on this limao so it is between india and usa and the countries with which we have this reciprocal access facility is usa and france both of them how it works is basically let me give you a brief overview of this thing say for example if you if your ship indian naval ship is somewhere in southern indian ocean and if it is requiring some fuel or something else right some other things uh, food maybe maybe some weaponry then it can uh, get all this thing topped up or recharge here in 
reunion island and you can pay, pay this bill a bit later on same thing this particular island is looked after by usa at present so we can access uh, this facility here in uh, this british island which is controlled by usa and then you can also access other usa's military base uh, from where you can get all these necessary items for your naval ships and other military purposes so this is how this limau and this reciprocal access between india and france will work now uh, as i was speaking about this thing that how we can tackle china the only chance we have is to act together like-minded states must work closely together to positively shape developments in indo-pacific region including by ensuring that continued unilateralism is not cost free unilateral unilateralism of china basically means that china is taking decisions it is uh, the decisions that are taken by china are basically violating international rules and regulation it is not paying any heed to this un clause or other laws and uh, so far china has not paid anything when i say paid anything means uh, no one has stopped china china is basically a free horse at present so it is loitering anywhere it feels it is good for it so this is something that is not acceptable at all alone we have seen even usa has not been able to stop china so together quad quad plus two and other countries together we can stop china this is the only chance that we have that's everything in today's uh, discussion dear friends I'm, I'm i believe that things are much clear to you now make sure you make the most out of this up to per, up to 50 percent off that is available with this dear friends uh, don't forget to pass your like if you have learned something out of this discussion if you have some more ideas if you think you can add on to the things that we have discussed then make sure you add your valuable comments in the comment section of this video make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and uh, if possible then do share it with other people as well thank you very much for listening jai hind